All right, guys, so here's a quick demonstration for you. Here we're in section 3.6. 3.6 is, is about inverse functions. Uh, specifically here, we're talking about the inverse uh, tangent function, that is arctan. Okay, so we're dealing with arctan 3x. Remember that we do have understood parentheses right there. The argument is 3x. So let's see here. We're going to have a chain rule derivative. Now, recall what the derivative of... Uh, of arctan is the derivative of arc tan of some function u is u prime divided by 1 plus u squared now just just to emphasize this if you want the derivative of arc cotangent the only thing different is there's a negative sign on the numerator that's it Okay, so if you know arctan, you know arccotan uh, pretty much automatically as long as you remember that you take the, it's, it's, an, it's essentially the opposite, you know, the negative of it. Now, let's, let's jump right in here. We're going to find the equation of the tangent line of f at this point. Now, recall that the, the, the strategy here is to find the derivative, evaluate the derivative at our given point. Oh, sorry. Evaluate the derivative at our given point. That will give us our slope, then use point slope form to write the equation of the line. And lastly, simplify that equation to slope intercept form. All right, so let's, let's see here. Step one. Step one is find the derivative. So f prime of x equals, okay, uh, u here is 3x. So u equals 3x. So we have, let's see here, u prime, that is the derivative of u. So the derivative of 3x divided by 1 plus u squared, so 3x squared. Well, that's not so bad. So let's finish it out. So the derivative of 3x is simply 3. Then 1 plus, okay, 3x squared, that's 9x squared. So there is f prime, not so hard to come by. Now, step two is to evaluate our derivative at our given point. Now, we have been dealing with implicit derivatives, where the derivatives are oftentimes in terms of x and y. In that case, we have to plug in x and y. But here, this is an explicit derivative. So we only need to plug in our given x value. So this is our given x value. That's our given y value. We'll actually, we actually call it x1 and y1. Okay, we'll call it x1 and y1. Um, but if we plug in x, we will get f prime. Oh, I wrote f inverse there. Where, why did I do that? I've been talking about inverse functions too much lately. Let me fix that. F prime, F prime. Okay, F prime of negative one over three. So we're evaluating our derivative at negative one over three. So we get three divided by one plus nine times negative one over three squared. Now that's not so bad. That's just 3 divided by 1 plus what's negative 1 third squared? Well, it's negative uh, 1 squared over 3 squared. So that's positive 1 over 9. Positive 1 over 9 times 9 is just 1. So our derivative at our given x value of negative 1 third is 3 halves. So this is our slope f prime at negative one third, okay, equals three halves. That is our slope m. Okay, so now we have our slope of the tangent line. Step three says, well, just use algebraic techniques, that is point slope form, to write the equation of the line. Now recall, what is point slope form? Point slope form says y, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we could write 
here's our point x1 and y1, here's our slope, we can say that y minus y1, which is negative pi over 4, don't lose track of those negative signs, equals m, which is 3 halves, times x minus x1, which is also negative, be careful there. So there is the equation of our line, but as we typically see, now we need to simplify. So there is the equation of our line, that, that is legitimate, it's just not simplified at all. So let's first you know, take care of those uh, negative signs, that's y plus pi over 4 equals 3 halves times x plus 1 third. Now let's solve for y to put it in y equals mx plus b form. We can say that y equals 3 halves x plus, okay, we have, we're distributing this 3 halves here, 3 halves times 1 third, that gives us 1 half, and then minus pi over 4. Okay, so there you are. There is uh, our equation of the tangent line of f at this point. Now, if, if you really want to, I suppose you could combine this fraction. I don't think it's really necessary here. Um, those are not like terms, but if we wanted to, we could. You know, because that is, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, we don't automatically see what our y-intercept here is. We automatically see that the slope is 3 halves. If we combine these, we'll see automatically what the y-intercept is. We could say this is y equals 3 halves x. Now, if we get a common denominator, this would be 2 over 4. 1 half is 2 over 4. So we would have plus 2 minus pi over 4. Okay? I kind of like writing it like this because then I know this value, this value right here is m, and this value right here is b. So my y-intercept is 2 minus pi divided by 4, and my slope is 3 halves. So this is how I prefer the solution, but you could probably get away with the previous line if you really wanted to. I'm sure that that would be just fine. I wouldn't count up on a test if you gave me this right here. Okay, But I personally prefer this right here. Okay, So that's it the equation of the tangent line of f at this point is this line right here. So um, again, arctan, not so bad, not so bad derivative here. It's one of the easier ones to remember of your inverse trig. Uh, you know, just be careful with the algebra. You know, make sure that you know, when you square 3x squared, you square the 3 and you square the x. You know, make sure that when you plug in here, you substitute with negative one-third, that you're squaring the numerator and denominator, and that, and that you're squaring that negative so it results in a positive. So just be careful of all those little arithmetic, uh, all those little places where you could make an arithmetic error. Okay? If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Good luck studying. See you soon.